to Sales Talk, the TV show that talks about all things sales. We've got a real Cracker Jack, and if you're old enough to remember Cracker Jack, we've got a great episode for you all about collaboration. My special guest today is somebody that I follow on LinkedIn. If you don't, by the end of this episode, I'm sure you're going to want to. It's Fred Coatesday. And Fred runs a business called Brimby Sales Consulting. He's also the author of an amazing book called Selling Through Partnering Skills. Fred, welcome to Sales Talk. Brilliant. No, thanks a lot, Steve. You got my name right as well. <laughs> you, you didn't give it the chopstick, cupcake, soap flake, cheapskate version. So, uh, you're a mate already. <laughs> First time, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Fred. Just introduce yourself to the folks. Um, right, well, like you say, you know, sales trainer, founder of a sales training company. Um, you know, been around the world 14 times in the last 22 years. Wow. Uh, worked in 36 countries. I was doing some calculations. I reckon I work with over 10,000 salespeople. So, you know, I've been charmed really. So I've had a great time doing it. More recently, put the book together, like you said, which helps me concentrate on some of the, some of the more modern, some more collaborative approach to sales um, and yeah you know that's 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 kind of me, me in a nutshell if you like so 14 times have you got a favorite country oh now I'm gonna alienate the other 35 aren't I no. um, it depends what mood I'm in I t I'll tell you where I loved going I loved going to Argentina I, I really enjoyed it there yeah in fact, I enjoyed all the Latin American trips because I speak Spanish and I then train in Spanish. It not only the culture and all the rest of it and the wine and the steak, and but it 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 puts me out of comfort zone even more than I already am usually. So, yeah, I just enjoyed it there. And it, it, I don't just got a thing about it, Argentina. Fantastic. Uh, an Argentinian uh, uh, panache, but Latin America, 14 times around the world. You've seen lots of sales cultures. You've seen loads of different kinds of sales businesses. So collaboration must fundamentally be a key word. You've mentioned something in your introduction that I find incredibly, incredibly um, interesting. You use it so often because it ties up a little bit with, with some of the things that I talk about. So I wanted to explore that first, if you don't mind. You mentioned modern sales. Modern sales. Now, there's a group of people that say sales is the same as it's always been. It will never change. We have social selling. We have, we have all sorts of different, different aspects of selling. But when you say modern selling, what do you mean? And why is it important for a business owner, sales leaders and sales teams, to recognize what modern selling actually is? Um. Okay, so sales evolves. Yeah, it has evolved. It is evolving. It's constantly moving forward with new practices and as people understand the things that may really make a difference. Um, and so if you're not keeping up with that, if you're doing stuff that's old fashioned, it's not going to work as effectively. You're not going to sell as much. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's my very, very simple way of, of explaining that, you know, but it, it's not quite as simple. It's not like, oh, change from A to B to C to D. It's here are some of the things that we did in the past that still works, but you can refine it a little bit. And then this actually isn't so effective. But then here comes this sort of perhaps new way of looking at things. So we need to kind of add that into the mix. Mm. And so for me, the, the, the modern selling approach is just making sure we're picking all of the right bits of the mix to come up with something which is about being practical, about being relevant. And it's going to make a difference in what we do here and now. So that's that is a little bit there about not jettisoning the past, but enhancing the past with more modern approaches. And what would, what would an example of that maybe look like? Oh, okay. So let's just do a little spin through, a little sort of spin through the, um, the, the evolution, if you like, very, very quickly. And if you look at sort of the 50s, sales reflect to the era, if you like. So if you look at the 50s, this was all about process. You know, you imagine production processes and all this kind of stuff. That was a hot topic. Same with sales. It was about having a good, solid sales process, doing tried and tested things time and time again to be successful. Well, neither of us is going to throw that out. We're going to say, no, that's a good idea. Oh, we'll have a bit of that. Maybe not as it was in the 50s, but let's keep a little bit of it. 
let's move on to the so- 60s. 60s, we'd say that was that was an era where people were fascinated with the brain, how people thought and so they spent a lot of time messing their brain up, didn't they? Think about the sort of psychedelia and all that kind of stuff. But again, if you look at things to do that as well, didn't well, you know, there's a lot of that going on. Um, but if you look at the sales training, it was understanding how people would think, you know, and how would you adapt your approach to be to do things that was most comfortable for them. Now, again, we, we will train that. We'll train that today because it makes a lot of sense. You know, there's loads of models around to recognize their thinking styles. Yeah, good. We'll have, we'll have a bit of that. Yeah, let's put that in our mix. 70s. I think the focus was suddenly more on yeah, benefits. We've really got to get better at selling benefits. So benefit selling, absolutely part and parcel. For me, if I'm training, that's, that's beginning. <laughs> so I'm not even going to go on until we've got this as a foundation. So again, well, we'll have a bit of that. 80s, uh, I, I take at least from the 80s. It's not totally, <laughs> I'll throw it away, but you know that kind of weird greed is good decade and close, close, close and objection handling and batter away the thing and push the hurdles out. It's like, okay. Luckily, 90s, you know, we know that consultative selling came along and it, the whole focus, you know, following the, the rack and research and everything was asking better questions, understanding needs. That is an absolute foundation for everywhere that we're going now. So that's a really important part. Questioning is anyway, but that consultative type questioning, we need that. But, you know, that's 30 years old, isn't it? <laughs> Doesn't say it's no good, but it's 30 years old. So what happened in Naughty is we had more of this value focus, didn't we? What's value? And it was super simple terms. You go like, well, if 90s was about pain, then noughties we could start thinking about the gain. Oh, pain and gain together. Happy days. You know, and value and impact and outcomes, that kind of language. We very much need part of that now. So, yep. Yeah, if we're building, if we're cooking a cake, we'll put more ingredients in, but the cake's getting better. Tens, I would say, was probably more about your sales stature or being perceived as the person that can actually make that difference. We'd probably call that personal branding now, mm-hmm. um, which kind of keeps us moving, keeps us moving, keeps us moving up to twenties, where it's well, we're bringing all this stuff together. But now more than ever, we're working with customers. We're understanding buying processes. We're sort of trying to make two and two equal five in the way that we co-create and collaborate. So it's, it's taking all those things and just using them in slightly different ways with an ethos that we want to work with someone rather than do sales to them, if you like. Yeah, and our, and our buyers have also been on that continuum as well, right? Our buyers now expect to receive different sales approach is a modern sales approach from the sellers i'd imagine don't they they do i I had a fascinating conversation with a procurement guy the other day who was who did pretty much what i've done but in the evolution of procurement and we were kind of matching stuff up proper sales and procurement geeks (laughs) Um, but he was sort of saying yeah we kind of went through these evolutions and you know there was this phase where we were squeezing 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 you know trying to get as much out of salespeople as possible and there's nothing more to give and luckily we've realized that and went you know what we should actually be working with them the ones which can really make a difference we should be working with them better and so using that to really create the value and now they're properly talking about value rather than just throwing it into negotiations put you under pressure um and that is where they kind of get i forgot his exact expression but it was i think it was a team of a thousand that the company worked for we're talking about a team of a thousand so I haven't got a thousand people, but they can have a team of a thousand because that's a salesperson and his team. And that's another organization of stuff that they do. If I'm clever, I can bring them in and they're all effectively working for us. That's how their mindset's gone. It was a, it was a really cool discussion. I love that one. Yeah, I, I, can, I can imagine so. And you've taken me back to the 80s and mullets and new romantics <laughs> and a whole decade, a whole decade that in, a, in, a, in, a, in an essence was, uh, was not really probably about collaboration, but was more about the result, but there'll be people watching this that will be will, will be sort of wedded to the eighties. I think the key is there's really- nothing wrong with new oh, romantics no, and stuff like that. No, 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 don't get me wrong. It's just the sales styles that I'm a bit upset it's with. Great, the 80s, it's a great period, <laughs> but but I, but I think there's I think there's a real piece here about things have changed, and I think I think things changing from a selling and a buying perspective. It, it's really important that we really ground what they are, because you mentioned about things being said, you know, the pain and gain can be a bit trite, value can be a bit benign. It's when you really understand the component parts of each of those that you can start to interpret them and add, 
um, add that insight into the sales approach that you're taking. And one of the pieces of insight that you specialize in is, is the area of collaboration. And clearly in your book, Selling Through Partnering Skills, you highlight the real need here to, to master collaboration because there is untold benefit in organizations recognizing the power within, within it. And you've got a really neat framework, right, called PQ. And what I, what I find interesting, I've heard of EQ, I've heard of IQ, um, I've heard of QI, that comes from TV <laughs> occasionally. But <laughs> tell, us, tell us about PQ and, and why is understanding this helpful? Because I would imagine that complex B2B build, uh, deals have always needed this, haven't they? They, they have. So, so let's, let's just understand what PQ is to start with. Um, I can't take the credit for it. You know, it's not something that I've invented. Um, There's a guy called Steve Dent back in the late 80s, early 90s, was doing a lot of work uh, with businesses that were doing these big formal alliances. So you imagine uh, the airlines when they sort of come together in these big groups. And he was looking at sort of how to make these, these agreements, the, these partnerships more effective. And one of the things that he says, and, and I absolutely echo, because I think it makes a lot of sense, is organizations don't partner, people do. So then you look at what are the skills that people have that makes them more prone or better able to partner. And again, he put a lot of research into this and he's had this, this, this stuff validated and verified at American universities. And he's come up with these six elements. So I was doing quite a lot of work in channel at the time and I thought, oh, partnering skills, yeah, that makes sense. I'll have a look at these. And when I looked at these elements, I went, well, that's not just in channel. That's every single salesperson, every single one, direct sales, indirect sales, whatever. If you understand these and you work on these, then let's take our cake we're baking, bake them into that or put them as the icing, whichever way you're going to do them, but use them to give you this ethos, this mindset that's going to let you access that collaborative approach more effectively. So we need the six, don't we? So what are the six? First, trust. Yeah. Yep. Key. You know, how do we build trust? What can we do to be more trustworthy? Yeah. How do we put our trust in people as well? Win-win focus. Now, you know, we've been talking about win-win and um, mutual benefit in sales for a long time. But what does it actually mean? Yeah, it's understanding what they're trying to achieve. There's all those elements. It's also how we discuss stuff, you know, how we resolve conflict, how we solve problems, how we negotiate. So that will give us a lot of good practical things to do to get better at it. We need to be comfortable with interdependence. Salespeople can be quite independent animals, but, I mean, you've alluded to it already. You know, we need to be better at the kind of teamwork and basically saying that our success is going to be dependent on other people, whether it's the customer, whether it's our own team, whether it's internal people, whether it's our engineers. It's We've got to work out how we give up bits of control and do that effectively. We talk about self-disclosure and feedback. So it's giving a little bit of information about yourself. You know, It's saying, this is the stuff that I need out of this. It was some salespeople won't do it. And we know that a lot of salespeople won't say to the customer, hey, no, you're not doing that right. They don't want to break the relationship. Whereas actually that's the best thing to do sometimes to make the relationship better is say, no, you're about to make a mistake here. Or say, look, you talk about partnership, but you're not helping me help you. You won't give me information. You're hiding stuff. You're just not behaving like a partner. So there's those kind of things we need to, we need to you know, help people understand and use. We need people to be comfortable with change. Salespeople are change agents, yeah? So we've got to understand change, what it is, how to talk about it, how to cope with it ourselves, because we're going to have to do stuff differently with this sort of rapid change of stuff, and certainly help the customers to do it. I'm saying whether they're on change curves or something like this. And then um, having a future orientation, doing all this stuff looking forwards. Yeah, so they all tie in. You know, I, get, I talked about them sequentially, but they all very much tie in. And the sort of future orientation a lot of that's to do with, with the decision-making because we could be saying, oh, yeah, we need to do this and this. And we got all excited and then somebody pipes up. Oh, yeah, we tried that. That won't work. No, that was then. <laughs> this is now. Let's look at the pace of change. We just said it, the things that are going on. If we understand these things, we can bring them into our sale, whatever sort of sale we do, like I say, and whatever level of sales, it can be sort of fairly sort of classic up to sort of full enterprise sale. That's going to help us be more effective. That's what, when I talk about modern sales, it's understanding this stuff and being very deliberate and conscious in applying it that helps us become more collaborative.
Mm. I think that I think yeah, some 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 incredible steps there. And I think the word at the end, all of it was valuable, but be conscious about it. Yeah. Consciously do something about it. Because I, I remember back in the day when I had some time in Johannesburg, South Africa, for Shell and Shell Lubricants, and we would sell to the mines. And we'd sell big volumes of product that went into high value production environments. Therefore, if a, high, if a high value production area had expensive kit in it and the expensive kit broke, it was actually not the product, it was the collaboration of all the parties around that operation that had failed, right? Things like recognizing the life cycle of an engine, recognizing the, the condition monitoring and all of, the, all of the signs that you were getting out of engine wear and so on and so forth. Procurement, perhaps you're not talking to them about future fit products. Um, recognizing the senior engineer that was potentially on his way somewhere very significant that could help, you could help and all of that kind of thing. So I, I, I recognize entirely what you're saying. One of the big aha moments in that business came was when we all became conscious about working as a team. And we saw very different customer relationships at the end, because this was to my point about B2B deals always being complex. One account really loved dealing with us. And actually the commercial arrangement was almost insignificant. Another very similar company was very transactional orientated, very myopic. And therefore the relationship we had was so one dimensional that it really didn't have longevity or fun. Um, so, is the, come on, am I getting close? You, you, you're absolutely spot on. I'm, I'm, sat, I'm sat back just going, yeah, this guy's got it. Super, <laughs> right. How, and how are we going to help people become more conscious in that? To answer the sort of second part of your original question, was like, so yeah, it is what's kind of always been done, mm -hmm. but I wonder how much this stuff has been stumbled across a little bit. Mm -hmm. If we do it more consciously, just as the salesperson say, I want to be better in the way that I apply myself to stuff, but I'm trying to bring everyone else in around that, including, by the way, my own team. <laughs> it's all very well doing with a customer, but mm -hmm. you want the backup and support. And you know, when, we, when we look at partnering in channel, particularly, it's, you know, start at home. <laughs> Make sure you've got all the partnerships, you've got your alliances, you've got the, the the relationships built solidly, so that when you're going out, as that sort of the person at the pointy end, if you like, um, you can then leverage all that stuff very, very quickly. Mm. So yeah, conscious. And that, I suppose that's how I don't want to dispose. It is our job to help people recognise that, to call it out, to give it a name, to understand mm. what to do, so they can get up to speed and be modern. Because yeah. it, I, I can see it only getting more like this than less. So we often say in our sales training that sales and marketing are just different sides of the same coin. You're, you're kind of expanding that thinking in organizations as well here, I guess. And on a very sort of base level for people watching this, who maybe aren't in the big multinationals, but the medium side, this is making sure your sales are aligned with your marketing, your marketing aligned with your technical, making sure each of those is customer intimate, making sure that actually you know what it is that's happening in the sectors and segments that you operate in. I guess it's really what can you do as a business owner or a sales team leader to really consciously drive that collaborative outcome, uh, output and make sure that everybody recognizes they contribute to the bottom line and the customer experience. It's got to come down to those things, right? Sales growth and retention of customers. Yeah, and, and everyone's got a part to play in it. Like you say, you know, the sales support people. Oh, they, they, they probably do speak to customers, but the guys in the warehouse who pack the stuff, the, everything where there's potentially something that's going to impact on the customer, which is everything. Otherwise, why are we doing it? You know, <laughs> oh, we're doing it because we can and we're great and we like it. Well, okay, well, it might be a waste of time then. Yeah, we've got to understand we are all in this together because this is what drives the business. Now, there's a guy who's a salesperson who will probably be leading the charge to a degree, but we've all got to support them. And we get the, if we get the mindset right, if they've got their partner, partner mindset, you, they're using the high PQ, other people start to get it, we're in a better place to do that. Brilliant. And the role of leadership, I guess, is critical, like in most things. I'll, I'll mirror your behaviours. 
uh, your role model and I'll copy. And I guess without jumping into a pandemic and a working from home kind of environment, virtual working must present us organizational challenge right now to get this alignment, to make it happen. So I'm really interested you know, with this as part of the PQ model, how do we how do we go about it? So I'm thinking about two aspects that you read out there particularly. Yeah. Confirm, confirm with independence and disclosure with feedback. Yeah. That's in your model. And I'm really interested in the, the whole concept of virtual working, but how critical I saw those two components being right now. Okay, so let's go with self-disclosure and feedback. Um, this is all about honest and open exchange of information. And so you know, let's forget about customers for a moment. And that kind of goes against the grain a little bit. But you're talking about, you know, how do we get ourselves sorted? Because we've got to sort ourselves. You know, and it's like, guys, you've got to be telling me, you know, sales leader, you've got to be telling me if you're not right. You know, don't don't battle this stuff. If you're not if you're not in a good place, you're not going to be doing a good job for the customer. And at the end of the day, I've got a bigger responsibility than just selling stuff, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Probably not really what we should be saying as sales traders, but, you know, I think we're from a similar kind of background in that. So, look, tell me about it if, if you're not feeling good, whatever. Equally, it'll be my job to give you feedback if I don't think you're going, if, you, if you're not doing stuff right. You know, if yeah. I don't think you're adapting to it well, if there's things you can do better, I am going to do that. But it's with the best intent. You know, it's, it's because I want us all to do well. I want you to do well. I want you to be able to adapt to this strange environment. And it is something we can adapt to. So that, that's kind of how I would see that one come into play in sort of managing and, and leading and, and working with a team of, of people all over, all over the place, if you like. Um, and then that comfort with interdependence, inter, yeah, it's we are in this together. So, again, it's what can you do to make sure that people aren't feeling as though I am sat here in my office on my kitchen table, you know, and some of the sales teams I'm working with, you know, in my bedroom. You know, oh, yeah. I work with quite a lot of teams where there's quite young graduates who are in the sales team and, you know, they're, they're, they're house sharing and that's their in private space and that's where they're working. So it can feel pretty lonely. And we know for a lot of salespeople, it's kind of ever been thus, but it can feel very isolated, if you like. So it's got to be, well, you know, we are interdependent. We're in this together. Give up some of the control. There's other bits which other people can do better. Share things. So, so those two are, are quite closely linked. And again, a, an understanding of it and what makes it up and how to get better at it is something that's is going to benefit people all around, yeah. And, and I think the reason I just wanted to, to pull out on those two, because right now today, there are millions, thousands, hundreds of thousands of salespeople working in artificial environments that they've never worked in before. They've probably been able to be quite resilient, tenacious, um, maybe work more independently because they were able just through sheer force to get things done in their business, to drive things, to make things happen in the customer's environment. But of course, their world has fundamentally changed and they are talking to each other as we are talking to each other right now. So virtual working, I, I battle whether this is actually going to be a bit of a hindrance or actually does it conversely with good leadership help drive collaboration um i mean for one thing that you wouldn't just say in there that i would always say or i am saying quite a lot now is you've got to be better at selling yeah, because you can't well. use your force of nature your personality your charisma and everything else just to move things along i'm not saying that they don't become important i'm not saying you can't do that online either but when you look at the basics of understanding what it is you're trying to achieve, Steve, what, how, how do we make that look? What do I have to go away and do? How do I present that back? Who do we bring in? You know, we've got to get better at it. But the beauty is, if I'm talking to you and thinking, ah, it's really interesting what you've given me there. And actually, my mate from Argentina is the perfect bloke for you to talk to. Steve, it's going to be an early get up tomorrow, but I want you to speak to Mario. Uh, and he will be in on the meeting for half an hour because we can. And we don't have to wait three months until he's doing his UK trip or we don't go, hmm, it would have been good if you could see him, but he never will. 
you know, we can start to do that. So in some ways, because the technology at our fingertips, it's just, you know, get Calendly out, look where there's a gap, line everybody up, happy days. We're now collaborating better. You know, from a very simplistic point of view, if you look at it like that, it's going to help us. Yeah. People talk about the quality of the relationship and whether by having it 2D and on, online, digital, whatever, it's going to be as good. But if I'm introducing you to somebody who's really helping you with that, if we're doing it regularly, if we're chatting, and if you're receiving results of it, I would say that relationship's going up. And I would say our trust will start to build. And I would say that, you know, because we're talking more the rapport, we'll have a little bit of banter at the beginning of each call. So I, I push back quite strongly on people who say they can't do it. Gently to start with, because I understand they're in a frustrated position. But if we can then really open their eyes to go, it's kind of stupid expression, same but different. And there's ways in which you can turn it to your advantage. As long as there's like a little inkling of sort of open mindedness, we can really start to help them. Some people just shut off and said, no, I can't. And uh, that's tough to help with. Mindset is a curious thing, right? And I'm not saying that's (laughs) generational. I'm not saying that's... um, but there is a traditional sales approach that has been conditioned. And I think not, you know, and that could be some of the younger, younger generations that sell that have been trained that way. Some of the older generation who we might naturally think find it harder to change. Some of them don't. But I, but I think to your point, Fred, it's a really, really fundamental step for the listeners to recognize, regardless of the platform, regardless of the physicality or the digitalization of your of your communication, get better at the sales part of your job, the qualification, the questioning, all the stuff that you said you don't throw away from the past that you build in to the current toolkit. Because virtual working should, I believe, like you, and we haven't discussed this point, benefit people that can sell because they will connect their, their, their networks they will use the opportunities to clarify. They'll probably drive things forward a bit more, bit more pace to your point, because we don't have to wait. We can, we can move forward and we can create momentum, be it through the conversation or through our content that we might provide that help feed that decision or that momentum. So I agree with you. I think it's a help. Yes, we all long for the days when we can get back and you know, have that more 3D view of each other, actually maybe hug each other, um, which would be quite strange, won't it, to see a lot of salespeople going up to their customers and hugging them well, for the first time. I, I've got this vision, I've got this vision of like, it's going to look a bit like a bar brawl because are you going to hug someone? Are you going to kind of do the forearm thing? Are you going to tap feet? So you'll be kicking a customer. They'll be like left hooking you. Somebody else will be like jumping all over. It's, it's going to be a right mess. It's going to be brilliant. Oh, God, <laughs> God willing, we get back to that. But it, oh, it'll, be, it'll be a lovely problem to have, won't it? In the meantime, your message is clear. Sales people get better at selling. Before you even start to think about leveraging other components of a modern sales approach, But I am hearing you fundamentally say and explain why collaboration should be an absolute advantage in B2B sales, particularly in more complex B2B sales, and why organizations absolutely should be looking to develop their their positioning on the PQ scale that you have, which they can find, of course, in your book, uh, Selling Through Partnering Skills. Just conscious that people are probably finishing their coffee breaks right now. And I just want to, I want to give them the opportunity, Fred, to just capture your, your three top tips right now. Your three top tips in this area of collaboration for business owners, sales leaders, and sellers who have just realized they need to up their game. Okie dokie. So (laughs) I think you're going to agree with this one. First one, do. (laughs) <laughs> it's on the wall behind you. <laughs> I my mantra is think, learn, do, <laughs> plan, yeah. grow, do. You know, I think we're probably saying exactly the same thing. If you could lose, if you had to lose two of those words, you'd lose the first two, wouldn't you? It's do. It's there's a there can be a lot. Of, I've seen people say, "Oh, look, I've read this book. I've read this book. I've done this. Look at this stack of stuff that I've read. I've read, watched these videos. I've done all these courses. What are you doing about it?" It's better to take something, you know, something we've talked about, something they've picked up and apply it. Think about how can I apply that? How can I action that? How can I get something from it? 
that that for me is one of the biggest things that people could do is do. So I know I'm going to get no argument from you on that. Probably a. <laughs> the other one, um, again, we, we've kind of talked about it in that it begins at home. So I would say is that it's you've got to start with yourself. You've got to look after yourself. And I'm not even now talking just about sales skills. I'm talking about just getting your brain right. You know, a lot of the, the collaboration thing and the benefits you get from it is about having your right mindset of trying to work together, of wanting to you know, have that work together ethos. So anything you can do that can just sort of get you in a good place, uh, I, I would suggest is, is a top tip. You know, and uh, basically I'm giving tips which aren't even about collaborative selling. It's probably just about being better at work full stop. Yeah, cool. I, um, I've started using a really cool app called Rocky AI. It's an artificially intelligent chatbot. I'm being coached by a robot. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not sure how to feel about this, <laughs> bearing in mind what I do for a job. But Rocky's doing a brilliant job. I mean, you know, every morning he asks me questions. Yeah, they're intelligent questions. The next question is related to what he's asked. It's using that AI power to form something. He then says, oh, you might want to have a little read of this. And it's picking all the very relevant snippets of reading. Oh, it's very clever, Rocky. So whichever way you do that, whether it's go for a walk at lunchtime, get away from the screen, just something to, to look after yourself you know, and get yourself right to be able to, to move this stuff, this stuff forward. Um, yeah, Rocky AI is a... I personified him, Rocky. So, oh, I need to get out more. Um, third one, have fun. We, we've got to have fun what we're doing. We're at work a long time. And yeah, for probably longer before, ironically, now we're working at home, we're putting more into it. And sort of, I guess that's part of the look after yourself thing is the, you know, the cutoff times and just not be try not to be on 24 7 which is it's often easier said than done but try and have fun enjoy what you're doing um because if if not you know it's it, it is tough you know and, and look, i'm not saying it's a, it's a right laugh all the time but broadly it's got you got to be doing something you enjoy and get that buzz out of that'd be my three do self fun yeah Ooh, that, that sounds like a new company steve <laughs> I, i'm gonna look for the uh, i'm gonna look for the domain right right now but, but, so I'm googling it first. <laughs> but but I think I think you know we often we often fall into the space of believing we have to give you know something that's either brand new or you know or something that you know we should say a soundbite. So so I think to have somebody of your experience, having gone around the world 14 times, authored a book, trained 10,000 salespeople to actually have distilled some three top tips: get on and do it. Look after yourself and make sure you enjoy it. I, I think if that's a life lesson, um, that, that's not a bad one to, to take away. Look, Fred, I've thoroughly enjoyed this chat and I really hope we get the chance to do something like this again. Uh, and, and clearly the fact before we came on air, we realised that we're a hop, skip and a jump away from each other. It could even be uh, real time. Um, but Fred, please just tell people who now clearly want to connect with you, where they can find you. Um, I hope they do. LinkedIn. LinkedIn will be it will be the best. You know, I'm, I'm on that a lot. Um, so Fred Copestake on LinkedIn. Connect on there. Mention that you, you picked up from, from our chat. That would that, be pretty cool. But yeah, look, I'm very open to, to connecting to people, answering questions. You know, maybe I've said something people want a little bit more detail on there's usually something if I can't answer I can point people towards something or find someone who answers it better than me usually is the, is the case <laughs> it's one of the great things about working more digitally is that you can very quickly point to a better answer over there but no yeah on LinkedIn will be the best best way to do it fantastic and we'll put the link to your book in any of the posts that we put out for this tell us once more of your book tell us where they can get that so yeah it's selling through partnering skills uh, it's available on Amazon and I tell you what, Steve, are you gonna if you're gonna put links, what I've got on my book website is a questionnaire which people can use to find out what their PQ is. Oh wow. So pop an email address in, it'll ask them some questions where they'll sort of grade various responses. Um, it'll it'll give them a spy diagram, but more importantly what it'll do, it'll send that to them, little write up on that, plus some reflective questions of what they can do 
when they see that they're probably not as high on some of the elements as they'd want to be, what they can do about it. So we'll, let's, let's pop, let's pop that link in as well. Always, always giving. Fred, fantastic. Thanks ever so much. Really enjoyed it. So, folks, that's the end of sales talk. I'm sure you've taken a lot from it. I know I, I have, um, and I've enjoyed my time with Fred. So, all you need to do, folks, if you're watching this on YouTube, is just subscribe. The button is below. If you're watching this on LinkedIn, connect to Fred, connect to me. Make sure that uh, you know we continue to help you with your sales journeys as you develop. From Sales Talk, that's it for now, and we'll see you next time.